I can't see who's in there yet. And that's the thing that I say. So I'm just going to go ahead. Good morning, CDPD. Um, it's me, Danette Edwards. I'm here with Wendy Lynn and Michelle Hender. Uh, they are here today to talk to us about tips on networking and managing relationships. So I'll tell you a little about Wendy. Wendy is an epidemiologist and real world si data scientist at a pharmaceutical company. In graduate school, Wendy founded PGYs, a student organization that focused on community outreach and advancing the career development of women in science and engineering. In addition to serving on the American Association for Cancer Research, Associate Member Council to Plan Career Development Programs, Wendy has been invited to speak about transitioning to pharma, to pharma slash biotech with early career scientists, training in academia and government. She co-manages the Women in Pharma Careers blog with Michelle. Welcome, Winnie. Thanks. <laughs> Michelle is an immuno immunologist working in cancer research at a global pharmaceutical company. Michelle, Michelle was a founding member of the BALSA Group, a nonprofit consulting company focused on creating career development opportunities for scientists while supporting the biotech industry in St. Louis. She served on the AACR Associate Member Council for five years, including one year as its president. Michelle has been a speaker in career development sessions for scientists interested in pharma, pharma slash biotech at the local, regional, and international levels. Together with Wendy, she writes and manages the blog, Women in Pharma Careers, that serves as a resource for career development and community within the pharmaceutical industry. Welcome, Michelle. Thank you, Wendy and Michelle, for being here today. Yeah, thank you so much for inviting us. Uh, we, this uh, Women in Pharma Careers is truly a passion project for Wendy and I. It's something that we do on our own time. There's no financial incentive here. In fact, we spend our own money on, on running the website. So um, we, this is something that we do just out of the passion that we have for career development and helping others. And so today, although we focus on, on women in pharma careers on our website and our, our career development talks usually, we're going to talk more broadly about networking in, in general and that I think would be applicable to people in, in any career. And I just wanna, oops, next slide, Winnie. <laughs> Um, go. Uh, I just want to point out that the views on this presentation are ours. It doesn't necessarily reflect the views or policy of our employers. As I said, that women in pharma careers is, is something we do on our own time. We both have day jobs in the pharmaceutical industry. Um, so this is purely our own opinions currently. Great. So next slide. Um, so today we're going to talk about the, the who, what, when, where, why, how of, of networking. I'll be talking more in, in general and introduction of, of networking. Well, Wendy is really going to talk about the specifics of networking um, and how to do it. So we'll start with what is networking. And networking is really developing relationships with people who share your professional or personal interests. Um, that, that's really what it is. And it's really a focus on the relationships with people. Networking is not just tiresome snoozing for a job. It's not just, can I get a job? 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 Like that's not developing a relationship with somebody. Um, and it's not restricted to the slick and superficial. Um, you can't be superficial and develop a relationship. So uh, like I said, networking is really about relationships and people. So why do you need to network? Um, network is how most people actually get their job. And we've linked to a survey in which demonstrates that networking is how people can, can get jobs. Um, but networking is not just focused on job hunting. Network is also um, important for career development. So career development is you know, gaining new skills, taking your career in a different direction. It's part of career exploration, learning about different industries, different roles. Um, it's also about finding mentors, advocates, and sponsors. And these are people that can help you in your career and your career exploration and development and just really act as a support for you. But um, 
So the purpose of this talk, this talk in general, is really focused on networking for career development, but there are other reasons to network as well. Um, networking can help you find different support groups. So some support groups that are out there is um, you know, COVID-19 survivors is a support group on Facebook. Um, you know, women in, in careers making it work. So working mother kind of supporting each other. Um, and, or, you know, networking can be just about sharing your interest in something with other people. So it could be about sharing your love for a certain football team. You know, it could be about sharing your interest in, you know, dog shows or a certain breed of dog. Like, um, it, and it could be about you know, sharing your enthusiasm for your community. So I um, belong to Fishtown is Awesome uh, Facebook group. And um, it's not just about how Fishtown is awesome, but it's a way of developing relationships with people in my community. Um, and networking, in addition, could be about promoting your business. And I know Danette had mentioned this yesterday on her Facebook Live is that you know, you can use networking to let people know about your business, to generate business, to promote your brand. Um, and you can use networking to promote um, is something that you're, let's say you're selling within your job and trying to meet others and letting them know what you're, what you're offering and giving them insight into what you, your products. But as I said today, we're really focusing on career development. Um, although some of these concepts can be shared across other reasons to network as well. And I'll just interject here, um, no need to take notes. We'll share these slides um, later. So you can also explore the links that we, we've placed on here. Right, and I think for, you know, on our website, we do have kind of different career we have like a job toolbox um, as well as just a blog in terms of our own personal experiences. And so we tried to link some of that resources on here. So if you wanna you know, learn about it a little bit more in depth, we, we have a website for that. <laughs> so we wanted to just kind of stop and give some examples of how networking can work. It's not just something that we talk about, it's something that we both have personal experiences with, and I think everyone has some personal experience with. Um, and by using these concepts and just being aware of networking, you can really get results. And uh, you know, one example that I have is I joined uh, as a college student association for women in science, and they had a formal networking program. So I was linked with somebody who was in California working for a company who was actually a male, um, the person and he ended up linking me with someone who was close by in a pharmaceutical company and that's how I got an internship in college working on the HIV vaccine. So that's an example of online networking in a very formal way um, but leading to a career opportunity that then shaped what I wanted to do in the future. Um, another example that I had was I went to a conference and so a lot of times when I go to conferences, I would look at the attendee list and kind of see who's gonna be there and try to learn about different companies actually and what they're doing. And I visited their poster, I talked to them and I ended up down the line with a, with a job offer from that interaction. So just putting yourself out there and being aware and being prepared um, can lead to opportunities. So Wendy has some examples as well. Yeah, I'll share some examples too. So um, in college, uh, I was looking for, for something to do over the summertime. And uh, so, and actually it was my mom who was doing some networking for me, you know, even before I knew it was called networking at that time. Um, well, she was a stay at home mom at the time. And so uh, she actually was, had a, had a group of friends who were all the parents of my, uh, uh, the parents of the kids that were friends with my brother. And uh, through that network, she had told everybody, hey, my daughter's in college. She is uh, looking for some, some work over the summer. If anyone knows of anyone hiring for, for a, a, a summer, summer job, you know, please let me know. And through that grapevine, 
um, something that was open uh, became known to us. And so I was able to meet with her friend's friend and introduce myself, you know, say what I was studying in school, um, learn a little bit more about what um, that person's company was, was looking to do. So, so that's how I actually got my first summer internship through my mom. <laughs> and then um, the other story I wanted to share is, is actually um, about how I got the job that I, I currently have um, right now, um, which is that, um, so I was transitioning out of my training and uh, was, was looking at careers in different industries. I was looking at the pharmaceutical industry. I was looking at government jobs. I was looking at academic jobs. And um, uh, I didn't really have many connections in um, the industry area, uh, but I thought, okay, I'm just gonna apply. And you know, you see all these job listings. So you apply online, you send your resume out and you never know if you're gonna hear back. But what I did after I sent out each resume was I looked at my LinkedIn and I said, who do I know that either works at those companies or maybe knows somebody that works at one of those companies and can me make an introduction for me, find out who the hiring manager is. Um, and so that's actually what happened when I applied to the company I'm currently at. Um, I had a former graduate student, uh, a, a, a um, colleague who just started a job at that same company. And so he put me in touch with the hiring manager and from there, I had a conversation with the hiring manager. I said, hey, um, I just applied for the job. I'd really like to understand more about what you're looking for. And, and just from our conversations, I think he, he got a sense of, of um, who I was and what I was looking for. And so when it came time for him to screen candidates and, and do all of the interviewing, he reached out back out to me and said, hey, since we've already talked, um, I think that we'd like to move you on to the next round of interviews, you know, instead of the, the initial screening round. So um, now can't say that that, um, that one thing about reaching out, um, if I hadn't done it, I wouldn't have gotten the job, but hey, I think it really helps because it, it puts you in front of uh, the right people um, more often. Mm -hmm. I just wanna share that story too. Yeah, that's right. So who is in your network? So as I think Lomi demonstrated, your family and friends are within your network. Um, then your, your colleagues are in your network, people that you've worked with, your professional community and, and the larger community in, in general. And I have to say, it's like people like within your neighborhood or even part of your network in that I, when I first moved to Philadelphia, the day I moved in after I, like we, we got it, we went to the bar and I said, I'm from Philadelphia. I lived in St. Louis for a year and then moved back. And uh, we went to the bar. He ended up talking to someone across from him at the bar. And then he ended up sitting next to us. And cause we realized we were both working in pharma and we were saying, oh, she's about to start her first job in pharma. <laughs> That's why we moved here. And it, it turns out this person is now a vice president in my company and someone that I work with. So you never know who you're going to meet. You never know when there's gonna be an opportunity for networking. So in general, larger community can mean your, your kids' school, your church, the clubs that you're in, just people within your neighborhood, uh, your professional community is there's alumni from your school, um, your teachers, your professional societies that you can join, um, different groups that you can be a part of. Um, your colleagues include um, your, your colleagues, your managers, people that you may work with within a, a matrix environment. So people not within your department, but in a different department you work with. And then your former colleagues. So it's important to try to keep track of everything. And, and Wenny will um, give some tips for that. So basically your network is everybody you know, and then everyone they know. So you're, um, once you meet one person, it almost grows exponentially because they know people and they have their own network of people. The next slide. So how to network. Um, you know, there's your daily community workplace 
interactions. And these are just, you're going about your day daily, you're talking to people. You may not realize that you're networking, but that is part of networking is just getting to know people, right? Every, every day, just your daily ongoings, maybe you're on your Facebook group there, you're just being yourself. That's and meeting new people, talking to them, just getting to know people, maintaining relationships, that's networking. So everyone could be, is networking without maybe realizing it. But then there's a part of networking that's actively seeking out and building new connections. And this is where Wenny is going to give us some tips and tricks. And I have to say, you know, even my story about a bar and then, you know, I'm in Philadelphia area, all the bars are closed. Um, and, and a little bit of this, we are going to talk about in-person networking, but there's a lot of networking that can be done online. And so uh, Wendy is going to talk about that. Yeah, for sure. And, and actually, before I start, um, what Michelle was just talking about in terms of your daily uh, interactions, um, I have a, a really good friend of mine who actually, she, um, a couple of years ago, struck up a conversation with the guy sitting next to her on a plane and six months later she's working at the same company reporting to him so you just never know <laughs> who you might meet and um if you can you know always be ready to give a good impression about uh what it is that you you what your skills are what you're looking for who knows maybe um uh th that can really lead to to new opportunities Okay, so, um, so more concretely, how do we seek and build new connections? And obviously right now in a pandemic, the internet is probably your best friend. Um, I know that Danette on the Facebook group has been uh, really promoting uh, different LinkedIn trainings. So I really recommend that you take a look at those. Um, and, and take a look at uh, using LinkedIn if you haven't already, because it's really, um, the way I describe it to people is like, it's like a Rolodex of, of, uh, of, of people that, um, that are in your network that you, can, you know that you can very easily search through, um, see what you have in common, see where they work, see what their career trajectories have been, uh, all the different places that they have worked. Um, and then, of course, uh, using other social media as well, Facebook, Twitter, um, keeping on top of, of uh, your connections there, seeing what they have to say. Um, and then uh, something, um, too, that I, I think uh, is, is a really good resource these days is alumni databases. So wherever you've gone to school, hopefully um, they have a career services office maybe and usually it's a career services office that might have a database of where their alumni have gone to. So you could start um, doing a search there to see, oh, who also graduated with my major and where are they working now? Um, or you say, hey, I'm actually thinking about applying to this job at this company. Let me go to the database and see if anyone currently works at that company now. Um, the other thing is professional societies. So Michelle and I both work in the sciences um, and so we belong to uh, professional societies like for immunologists or for epidemiologists or for oncologists. And um, that's also a good place to, to find out and, and try to uh, meet people, make new connections because um, in, some, in some industries, it's a very small world. So um, if you're gonna be applying for a job at a university, let's say, Undoubtedly, there's going to be somebody in that professional society who also works at that university. So making those connections can be really important. And then, um, you know, once we can get back out into the real world and interacting in person again, um, attending different events is also a great way to make connections. So these could be conferences and trade shows and oftentimes um, alumni associations will put together events um, with various themes. And then, of course, there are uh, networking themed events as well that you can go to. And so um, what's what's important here is that uh, not only is it the people that you meet, but it's also figuring out and asking them who they know. Right. So you meet somebody, maybe you've got some common interests, but um, they may or may not 
be able to help you when it comes to the, the, uh, the career that you want to pursue or the job that you're trying to apply for, but maybe they know somebody. Um, so get introductions, ask them if they would be willing to introduce you to the people in their network um, that could help you. And then um, informational interviews. So we'll go into more detail about that in a few minutes, but that's also a really important tool for how you can seek and build new connections. Okay, so how do you prepare for this networking? Um, first of all, let's do a little bit of research, right? So Michelle had mentioned that when she goes to conferences, she tries to get a hold of the attendee list. Who's going to be there so that she can figure out, oh, I got to go and find this person or, um, oh, th this person has an interesting background. Um, figure out uh, what, I, what do I want to talk to them about? Um, so really think about the people who you will be meeting, if you already know who you're going to be meeting, um, do a little bit of research on them, right? Google them, look at their LinkedIn profiles, see if they've written anything online. Do they have a blog like Michelle and I do? Um, and then after doing your research on those people, you got to make sure you do your research on yourself. So be ready to talk about yourself. So think about it as um, people call it an elevator speech. So about 30 seconds. Um, in those 30 seconds, can you tell people who you are, where you're working, if you're working somewhere currently, uh, what you currently do or what you'd like to be doing, and then what you're looking for? Um, is there a particular direction that you think that you'd like to be headed for your career? So have that ready, practice in front of the mirror, um, you know, practice with some friends, keep it short, keep it to the point, um, and then, now that uh, you've thought about who you might be talking to, and then you, you think about, okay, uh, how do you present yourself? Then it's time to think about maybe some specific topics. So um, this is where, uh, like if you were in the sciences, like Michelle and, and me, you might think about, okay, well, what are the, the recent uh, publications or some of the hot topics in our field that you might wanna read up on before you attend some of these events? Um, what are the current headlines, for example? And then uh, this is another opportunity to use social media. So maybe follow the prominent people who are in your field or in your industry on Twitter, see what they're saying, see uh, what are the, the um, discussions that have been happening um, on, on social media, because that could give you some ideas for questions that you might want to ask or things that you want to talk about. And then of course, again, once we get back out into the into the world where we can interact and you know have some business cards ready. They can be really simple. It's just uh, your name, your contact information, an email, a phone number. Um, it doesn't have to be anything fancy because honestly, you know, I come back from a conference with a big stack of, of business cards from people that I've met. I'm gonna go search for them on LinkedIn. I'm gonna send them a quick message. Hey, great to meet you at such and such conference. Um, it was wonderful to hear about you talk about X, X, Y, and Z. I'd like to stay in contact. Let's connect on LinkedIn. And then I tossed a business card. So <laughs> to me, business cards don't have to be anything fancy or complicated. It's really just so that it gives me something um, to remember you by once I get home and then I can connect with you online. Okay, so then how to approach somebody um, this is something that I personally have had to practice a lot. Um, now, I, I, I have been the kind of person who was painfully shy. Like in high school, in college, my worst nightmare was to get called on in class, right? Like I did not want to say anything. I did not like people looking at me. Um, it, it was a real challenge to think about, wow, I have to go talk to strangers. Um, and so... So actually in, in college, my, my dad gave me the advice. He said, um, you know, someday you might need recommendation letters and how are you gonna get recommendation letters if you don't talk to anyone and don't develop a relationship with anyone? So he said, you know, even if you don't really have any questions about your homework, go to your professor's office hours, you know, like show up and have a chat with them. Pretend you don't know how to answer you know, the homework question and ask for help. And that way, at least one, you practice talking to somebody and two, <laughs> you develop a relationship, right? Because maybe during that time, you're not just talking about the problem. You can 
you know, show the professor how you think, what, what um, and, and it could lead to other conversations that can help you develop that relationship. So it's really all about practice, 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 right? So I set goals for myself. You know, this week I'm gonna raise my hand once <laughs> in class or when I would go to a conference um, and didn't know anyone there. My goal was I'm going to go sit down at a table with no with people that I have I don't know and I'm gonna strike up a conversation and I'm just gonna do that once per day and just see how it goes, right? And, and the more you do it, the more it becomes, oh, it's not that scary, right? Like yeah, these people might be prominent scientists in their field, but hey, you know, I mean, they're just people too. Um, so so I, I, I encounter a lot of people nowadays who say, oh, but I don't want to waste people's time. Um, you know, who am I to be going to talk to these uh, prominent people or, or the senior VP in my company? And And my thought to that nowadays is that, you know, it's, don't think of it as you taking up their time. It really is building a relationship because not only might they them they, they help you at some point, but you might help them too. Like you just never know. So it's a two way street. Um, but anyway, getting back to the slide, um, it's really how can can you um, fake it until you make it when it comes to having some confidence, um, doing the practicing, and then. Think about um, when you're approaching somebody, explain who you are, you know, that 30 second elevator speech and why you're interested in talking to them. And honestly, a lot of times people are just really flattered that you want to talk to them and they'll be happy to talk to you actually. I'm always excited when somebody from my alma mater calls me up and says, hey, I'm really excited about what you're doing right now. Can I learn more? I love to talk about that. Um, so ask people about themselves with open-ended questions, ask about their career paths, ask about their current positions and their current companies, what it's like to work there. Um, now, once we get back into the real world, if you're going to be um, in a networking environment, uh, you know, when you enter in the U.S. especially, you know, it's really important to make eye contact, add, add to the conversation. And then let's say, you know, you've had a great conversation, um, you want to move on and, and meet other people now. It is completely fine to say, hey, um, I know we're both here to, to meet um, a lot of people and expand our networks. So um, great to talk with you. Let's connect later on LinkedIn um, and, then, and then move on, right? Like there's no need to be, to be worried about needing to exit the conversation or to continue talking to somebody that, you know, you don't really need to continue talking to for hours, hours at a time. All right, so I just wanted to kind of interject. I'm not sure if you can see me while Lenny is talking, but I think what's really important is that everyone practices active listening when you're networking with someone. You wanna show that you're engaged in what they're saying and that you appreciate their time. Um, so you smile, like kind of nod along, like show that you're happy to be there. Um, I think you want to acknowledge what you just heard. So you may want to repeat what someone says, just like, oh, okay. Um, you know, ask follow on or, or clarifying questions. I think when you're networking with somebody or even just talking with somebody, what you want to avoid is they're talking to you and you're just on your phone. You're not looking at them. Like if you're not showing that you're engaged, the person would feel like, well, they don't feel open to continue talking with you. Like, oh, you don't look like you're enjoying with what I have to say, or you don't um, necessarily appreciate the time that they're giving you. Um, so in general, just active listening, and you can demonstrate that even virtually um, or in person. So virtually you can still practice this active listening and show that you're engaged in the conversation that you're having. And I love this picture that Wendy found because I mean, they look interested in whatever that guy is saying. <laughs> no, thank you. And then I guess I'll ask a kind of a follow on question was that Wendy, you mentioned informational interviews. I'd love to learn more about it. Yeah, excellent. All right, so informational interviews. Um, what are they? What do we use them for? So informational interviews are not about getting the job. This is not a job inter interview. This is purely for you to get more information. 
Um, and this is for you to get insider information, right? So let's say you, you've applied for a job in a particular company. If you can do an informational interview with somebody who works at that company, you're going to get the insider information on what it's like to be there, right? Um, it can help you prepare a stronger application. It can help you explore a career path. So let's say um, you uh, find an alum from your college who graduated from with the same major, but now they're in a totally different field. So you might want to ask them, how did they get there? How did they go from being a finance major to now being an astronaut or whatever, <laughs> right? Um, and then also it's a way to find out about, about job opening. So maybe um, uh, they haven't posted it yet online, but you talk to this person and they say, oh, actually I anticipate in the next six weeks or so, we're gonna be opening up a position. And you can say, wow, that's really good to know. So then you can find out like, what are they looking for? How can you make yourself a good candidate? And you'll know ahead of time before anyone else does that um, they might be hiring. So again, this is not a time for in, in an informational interview to ask for a job, but it could lead to different opportunities. So, um, so on our website, we've got a, a few uh, resources about how to prep for an informational interview, but some of that is what we've already discussed. So research the person you're gonna be talking to, be ready to talk about yourself, and then have some questions to ask. Um, but before we get actually into, into more, um, I know that a lot of people wonder, well, how, how do I reach out to people? I don't, they're complete strangers. Won't, won't it be weird that they get this request from me? Um, and like I said, I actually very much welcome when um, uh, other alums from my, my alma mater reach out and say that they want to chat. So it, it's, it can be very, very simple. It can, it, it's, you should keep it very professional. Um, on our website, we've got some email templates that you can use. So let's say you found somebody on LinkedIn, but you don't know them personally. You'd like to um, explore what they do and you'd like to have a chat with them. So here, here's an example uh, email. So dear the person. Now, um, depending on what country you're in or what region of the world you're in, you might want to check on how, what's the most appropriate way to, to call them, you know, first name, last name, whatnot. Um, but you can just say who you are. Uh, I'm currently working as a technician at the such and such lab. Um, and then um, if, if somebody is uh, mutually connected or somebody says, hey, you should really go talk to my cousin who does X, Y, and Z, you can say, um, my colleague so-and-so suggested that I reach out to you because you work at this, this company I'm interested in exploring. Or, or let's say you found somebody in an alumni database. Hey, we've graduated from the same university um, and I'd really like to, to hear more about your career path. And then get very straight to the point. You know, you, you've said who you are, you say why you're interested in talking to them. And so you just ask. I would really greatly appreciate an opportunity to talk to you for 15 or 20 minutes um, to ask some questions about your experience. Is there a good time that we can set up this phone call? Um, and uh, yeah, so it, it can be very simple. This is just an example email, um, but we have additional templates that you can take a look at for, for your various situations as well. All right, so let's say you've sent out that email, they reply and they say, yeah, I would love to talk to you next week. You set up a, a Zoom call or you set up a phone call or you know, once the pandemic is over, you set up a coffee chat at, at Starbucks or something um, if you're local to each other. And um, so be ready to come in with some, with some questions to ask. So these are just some example questions. So tell me about your current position how did you get there? What was your career path? You know, did you go to school for that? Did you need extra training to get that position? Or uh, how are those jobs typically posted? How did you find out about it? Um, what are the skills that are needed? What's the interview process like? And then maybe you have questions about the future. Where do you see yourself in five to 10 years? You know, everybody's favorite interview question. You can ask that to this person too. And, and ask about the long-term opportunities in that field. This is also an opportunity for you to get advice. So um, I would say that 
at the end of every inner informational interview, you should ask them, it's been wonderful to talk to you. Is there anyone else that you think I should talk to to get more information, right? Because now this person's in your network, let's take advantage of his or her network too. Um, ask about, are there professional societies that you should be joining or get feedback um, about the interaction that you've just had or feedback about um, your current uh, resume or CV. Um, and, then, and then see if they have any insights into possible positions that you might keep an eye on out for. And then always, always, always follow up with a thank you email, um, personalize it, make sure that like Michelle mentioned earlier, you wanna make it look like you were listening, right? That you were interested. And then they really feel appreciated for the time that they gave you. So um, we've got a link here to uh, one of our articles that uh, shares with you some additional interview questions that you can take a look at later. And then so after all of these activities, right, um, networking, informational interviews, as Michelle said, this is really about maintaining a relationship. The worst thing I think is I, I give you all this time, right? I, I, I give you 15, 20 minutes, maybe a few times we meet for coffee. And then I never hear from you ever again. I have no idea what happened to you. Like, I don't like that actually, as somebody um, who, who enjoys mentoring and seeing where people go. So definitely keep in touch, right? Um, choose a holiday, any holiday and, and reach out and say, hey, this is how our, things are going. Um, keep up a conversation, uh, update people once in a while where you are. Um, and, and of course, like, okay, if you're bad at organizing, LinkedIn can do it for you, right? That's a great way to organize your contacts. Um, yeah, so, so really keeping up the conversation can really help foster that, that relationship, um, either, you know, virtually or in person, if you want to get together for coffee once in a while, lunch, you know, that sort of thing. And then now you might say, okay, well, I met this person. How do I keep in contact when, you know, like I have nothing to say? Well, maybe um, based on the conversations you've had in the past uh, about a particular topic, you come across an article somewhere, or you come across a job posting somewhere, or you come across something, and you say, hey, actually, that reminds me of this person. Well, don't hesitate to send it to them, right? Hey, I saw this article, it made me think of our conversation. I'd love to share it with you in case you haven't seen it. Um, or you say, hey, we talked about X, Y, and Z. You mentioned that your daughter is looking for a job in art history. Well, I would love to connect her with my former classmate who works at the Smithsonian. Is that something she would be interested in? Uh, and then Michelle also men mentioned mentoring. Mentoring is a whole other issue and topic that we could talk hours about. Um, so we'll just leave it there. But mentoring is another opportunity for you um, in terms of maintaining that relationship. And then lastly, be respectful of your time, of their time, right? So yes, I said, share articles, send emails, but don't do this every day, right? Like once in a while is okay. <laughs> okay, so next steps. So we'd like to challenge you to start or update your LinkedIn profile and then contact one person, right? Remember I said, practice, practice, practice. And I set goals for myself. I'm gonna raise my hand one time this week in class. Well, we wanna challenge you to contact one person in your network for an informational interview. And I think that we've given some resources here. You could check out our website for additional resources on how to make that happen. And then here we've just got some additional um, books uh, from people that are even more of a, uh, of an expert at networking and informational interviews than Michelle and me. And then, yeah, so lastly, uh, you know, feel free to keep in touch. We, we put our um, thoughts and advice and, and the thoughts and advice of our peers and our mentors also on our website. So um, feel free to contact us by email, subscribe to our blog newsletter. You only get it quarterly, so it's not gonna clog up your email inbox, but then you'll see, you know, some of the content that we put out there. Happy to um, field any questions, Danette. And Danette, you're on mute. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Hi. No, I, I'm looking. 
I have comments. I don't have any questions. Anybody want to pop chime in with some questions now? I think this was excellent. I had a couple of tips for myself. Uh, I'm not a great networker. I just like to talk. Uh, but I don't, guys, I don't have any questions. No one. I hope they don't pop up after. Uh, I just, I, oh, this is awesome, wonderful presentation. I love this. I have that kind of stuff, guys. So you have that. No, that sounds great. If anybody has yeah. questions, they can certainly reach out to us either on the Corona Gays mm -hmm. professional group or um, they can contact us through our website. We'd be happy to answer any questions or you know provide additional resources. Yes, I'm, I'm encouraging everyone, please uh, go to the Women in Farmer Careers website, even if you're a man. Um, mm -hmm. There's excellent information, the templates I love. But there is excellent information there. And then if you, I'm trying to look at what they're saying and talk. I know that's not great. Um, but I'm getting like, oh, excellent presentation. Got lots of tips. Um, but no, I really uh, encourage everyone to go to the website. There's so much great information from Wendy and Michelle. Remember that these, these are two women. They're moms. They're scientists. Okay. They're doctors. And they have a lot of stuff going on and they gave us their time. Not only did they give us our, their time, but they have a whole website dedicated to careers in, for women in pharma careers. Um, there's information there for men. You know, um, men can use it. It's one, one size fits all kind of, some of it. And some of their information can be used for any career field. So I implore everyone, we're all here for, we're trying to network, we're trying to build our careers, we're trying to build our businesses. A lot of their tips, like a lot of these networking tips that they provided today would help you guys with these businesses that some of you have these businesses and you never told me you had them. I didn't even know, right? And we're friends. So I'm not going to keep everyone. I love these um, these comments that are coming. I would just encourage everyone, please, on your own, to seek out Winnie and Michelle. But remember, their time is valuable. As they said, be respectful of the time, right? But seek them out through emails. Support what they're doing. Read their articles. Share their articles. Uh, uh, subscribe to their um, newsletter. And of course, thank them. Um, and thank you all for being here today. Thank you again, Winnie and Michelle. I appreciate you. And that's it. Thank all right, you. guys. It was a lot of okay. fun. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Okay, let me end.